Yeah, yeah. You don't have to look. It's only so. You don't have to look, mother. Some people have asked for um, videos for shampooing. Why? Why? Because people are interested. So I've got a gown, I've got disposable gown, and then a towel, and that's to make sure that the client is kept nice and dry, like lean food slightly, and then we go back into the back wash, make sure all the hair is over. Now I don't like having I don't like having um, hair wrapped around my fingers, so I wear gloves. It's really weird. I hate wet hair on my fingers. So I'm going to be using black caviar, blonde hair because Mum's hair is white, and. That is the total care, oh, sorry, the total reviving conditioner again from Black Caviar. And I carry this brand if you're interested in purchasing it. How's that? Is that okay? Is it too warm? Mm -mm. A bit warm? How about that? Is that better? Mm. You mustn't forget to do the make hair. And I always do the fringe last. Now this lovely lady who I'm shampooing is my mum. She's the reason why I became a hairdresser. So you're only going to do one squirt. That's all you need. And yes, mum has got a blue tinge to her hair because she likes to have a little bit of a, a blue or purple hair colour, don't you mum? So all I'm doing is getting it all through the hair first and at the nape of the hair and then we go through and we shampoo. Make sure the hands are always on the head at the same time. And you do circular movements. So you've got to remember you've got to do two shampoos. The reason for that is that the first shampoo takes away the environmental dirt. So from just having your hair in the environment, walking around traffic every day environmental gets into your hair and then the second shampoo takes out all of the Dirt. So 
and when you shampoo you should be lifting or rinsing sorry you should be lifting the hair up so you can make sure you get as much of the suds out as possible so every bit of the hair is rinsed even at the nape And then with the second shampoo, we're just going to use half the amount that we did the first time. So literally that amount. Again, we smooth it all in first. And then we go in. And you'll notice that it sets up better than the first time. Because we've got all of the environmental damage and dirt off of the hair. And now we're cleaning the actual hair, not the environmental stuff off. Now when mum used to train me to do shampooing, she used to tell me off if I've got any shampoo on the the palm of my hands so that's why I do that and then go in isn't that right mum yep you shampoo with your fingers not your hands yep you've got to go around all the hairline Now you should always cut around the ears because you don't want water to go into the ears especially if they're a hearing aid wearer like my mum is or they might have an ear infection shampoo is out now now with the conditioner just using that amount rub it in I'm going to turn the water off this bit So we're pulling it all the way through from the roots to the tips and now we're just going to go in and give the head massage. Now if you know what movement I'm doing, put in the comments below. If you know what movements I did with the shampoo in, again, put it in the comments below. <laughs> I'm doing it right then if you're falling asleep. Mm -hmm. Now sometimes mum has an Indian head massage, you have one about every six months don't you? And the only thing is with that, uh, she falls asleep. Now 
and I'm using my fingers as a rake to make sure all the hair is covered with the conditioner. And then we just come back to rinse again. Time to come through. It's always freezing cold. Oh, here we go. This is why I always leave my tap running because it takes so long to come back through. Right, how was that? Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Again, you always cut round the ear. the other side of the wall. No. And then your second towel is always ready after you've rinsed along the hair route. The second towel goes over while you're still in the back wash. You put the head down and you give a slight massage where you've got the towel on. This way it stops your client from dripping. And you're giving a little bit of a base. So. So I had to just go and let Harlequin in, she got stuck outside. So you want to make sure that your hair is still damp. So if you're going to trim the hair, you can do it without wetting it down. So you don't want it so much so that your client gets dripped onto and she gets drowned when you lift her up. use this it is called silver effect foam shade and it is blue so that's all I put on mum and I'm just going to show putting this in mum and then I'll turn it off okay mum not really keen about being videoed so, same as if you've got to put mousse on, you use the comb and you just comb through. So we want to get all the front of mum's hair where it's very, very white. And mum has this put in every two to three weeks, isn't it? What are you not doing? 
we've got the great escape there. Max has just let everyone out. He's just taken down the stair gate. And... If you're worried, or if you're wondering who Max is, Max is my Staffy Cross Chihuahua dog. Oh, and um, if you go back to previous videos, I introduce all my dogs to you. Oh, and the other one who looks like Harlequin is called Stanley, and uh, he's Mum's dog. It's really, really good, really, because uh, Harlequin was trained to be my diabetic alert dog, and Stanley was trained to be Mum's anxiety dog, isn't he? Isn't he? Yeah. So, and pugs are very good at training because they're so intelligent. They're noisy, but intelligent. And if it goes onto the scalping different sections, just rub it in with your fingers and it comes straight off. And that's how I apply the silver foam. It gives mum a little bit of a blue tinge. And that's just the excess residue on the comb. You just wipe off and then we stick it back in the barbicide. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them all. Thank you, bye. Are you going to smile, Stanley? Are you smiling, good boy? Stanley, smile. Oh, he's a clever boy, Stanley. He's a clever boy.